A Hungarian autocrat, Viktor Orban, is revealing new details about his discussions with Donald Trump in Florida over the weekend, including uh, that Trump, quote, will not give a penny uh, to Ukraine if reelected this fall, a move he believes would end that war with Russia. Orban made the comments on Hungarian state television this morning. It comes just after the former president posted a highlight reel of Orban's visit to his Truth Social account, which included Orban praising Trump's leadership and lamenting the state of the world without him in the Oval Office. Let's listen. Trump elnök úr a béke elnöke volt, tiszteletet parancsolt a világban, és ezzel megteremtette a béke feltételét. Az elnöksége alatt béke volt a közel-keleten, és béke volt Ukrajnában is. Ma sem lenne háború, ha még mindig ő lenne az Egyesült Államok elnöke. And we're joined by Ann Applebaum. She's a staff writer for The Atlantic, author of several books, including Twilight of Democracy. Uh, and, you know, this, this, uh, there's so much going on, and I guess because of... Uh, uh, the solar eclipse that occurred because of Katie Britt's uh, performance after the State of the Union. I mean, the, the Orban-Trump visit sort of got overshadowed a little bit. And I'm just curious if we get your reaction uh, to Viktor Orban, this uh, headline coming out of uh, their meeting this morning. Orban saying that the two talked about Russia's war in Ukraine and that Trump is not going to fund it. I mean, that should be very chilling uh, to leaders across Europe this morning. You know, let me start by connecting your previous segment to this sure. one, uh, because Orban is really the European leader who invented the idea of the fake campaign against migrants and the mm. idea that the migrants are invading. And they're, you know, and there's a secret plot that that migrants will replace, you know, ethnic Hungarians. That's right. Uh, and he was the one who started that. Um, and some of what you're hearing the GOP do and Trump himself do is actually an imitation of that. You know, this kind of, in, in, in the case of Hungary, there were, it's a completely fake story. There, is no, there was no border crisis in Hungary, no real one. We do have one, but it's, but it's of course very nuanced and complicated. But using this military language, turning it into an invasion, this is what Orban did to hide his real agenda. So he talked about migrants, um, you know, he talked about Hungary's enemies, and then behind the scenes, what he's actually done as prime minister is do deals with Russia, do deals with China, um, you know, uh, uh, corrupt Hungary, uh, reduce the Hungarian business elite to just a few people who are his friends. Um, and I think that is actually the model that he is presenting that, that's so appealing to the GOP. And it's also, um, it, you know, it's also the explanation for the connection between Hungary, Trump and Russia. Um, so, so the so yeah. the agenda is, you know, we do private deals with Russia, and we, um, you know, but we don't talk about it in public. And I, and I think Trump is, you know, Trump actually talks very rarely about Ukraine in public, um, very and very rarely about Russia. Uh, but we know from his actions that he has been responsible for blocking, uh, for persuading the House to block aid to Ukraine right. in order for Ukraine to lose so that Russia wins. But, and Anne, there's also, I mean, the, the uh, arguably, maybe you'll disagree with me, the larger issue of, of all the world leaders that Donald Trump is bringing to Mar-a-Lago, uh, you know, during this uh, general election campaign, which has basically started, he brings Viktor Orban, uh, this autocrat in Europe uh, that I suppose might form some kind of alliance with Donald Trump. Uh, maybe it's kind of a post-NATO world that they envision. Uh, more autocratic world that they envision. Uh, I mean, this th this should alarm a lot of Americans. And the fact that they're talking foreign policy, talking about very significantly altering uh, foreign policy of the United States when it comes to Ukraine, I mean, that, that should raise alarm bells. Yeah, look, a German member of parliament said to me um, a few weeks ago in Munich, we, we in Europe realize now that in, in a matter of months or years, we could be dealing with facing three autocracies, you know, you know, Russia, China, and the United States. And so, yes, there is a very real fear that Trump will align with Russia against Europe, uh, that Russia will cease to, uh, you know, not, not, not just cease to, to send military aid to Ukraine, but will also encourage further Russian incursion in, in, into Europe. Um, so absolutely, it's, a, it's an enormous fear. And of course, that would change the balance of power in the world, and it would have an enormous effect on perceptions of the U.S. in the world, on trade with the U.S., on whether Europeans buy American products, all kinds of things that most people don't factor in. 
you know, America being the security guarantor for Europe bestows a lot of advantages on the United States, including economic oh, yeah. advantages. And one, once we lose that, it's going to be very hard to win back. That's right. I mean, our European allies, they're going to be tempted to form other alliances if they see Donald Trump on the verge of coming back to the White House. I mean, that's that you hear that from diplomatic officials here in Washington all the time. And and another parallel between Viktor Orban and Donald Trump, we should talk about this morning on CNBC. Trump called Facebook and the uh, news media here in the United States the enemy of the people. And I was talking about it in reference to uh, a TikTok question, but let's watch this. I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people, along with a lot of the media. I think Facebook has been very dis. I think Facebook has been very bad for our country, especially when it comes to elections. Now he seems to be coming to TikTok's rescue a little bit uh, with all of this talk of Washington of cracking down on TikTok. And we should note, I mean, one one place where you see a lot of MAGA propaganda is on TikTok these days. So perhaps that has something to do with it. But and we should also note a number of press or organization, press freedom organizations, have blasted Viktor Orban's crackdown on the media. Of course, we saw that during the Trump administration here in the U.S. It sounds like another parallel. So what's important about Orban's crackdown on the media and why it's, a, why it's an example for, uh, for, for, the, for that minority of the Republican Party who, 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 who want a more authoritarian system is that it wasn't done with censorship. So Orban didn't censor people. Instead, he used tactics. You know, he used um, business pressure on advertisers who advertised in independent media. He would say, do you really want to place that advertisement because you might lose your government contract if you do? Um, yeah. he, he used, uh, you know, he cut, he cut funding for all kinds of advertising that the government used to do. You know, in other words, he put uh, business pressure on media in order to put it out of business. And eventually, over a period of time, he succeeded. And that's something that's never been tried in the United States, certainly not with the federal government seeking to put media out of business on purpose. Um, but it's something we could see. I mean, it's something that others have tried to imitate. Orban did it. Um, the previous Polish government that lost the election in October tried to do it. Um, others, others have seen this as a kind of example. Absolutely. There's no question about it. I mean, if you look at press freedom organizations, they have uh, basically called Viktor Orban a press freedom predator uh, in, in his country. Uh, so that's obviously something that uh, should worry a lot of people. All right, Ann Applebaum, uh, thanks as always. We appreciate it. Our panel is back with us, including Sher Michael Singleton, who rode his Ducati as quickly as possible to arrive with us. Welcome, Sher Michael. Here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so let's start with this Orban um, situation. Uh, high praise for uh, this a strongman hosting him at the club. Um, you can you sort of. I mean, how do you view this as a Republican? I mean, I like. I mean, what's going on? you know, it's not only uh, the former president, but even the Heritage Foundation. They've also hosted him, and, and Heritage Foundation clearly uh, and a conservative, once upon a time academic in, intelligentsia in the same uh, uh, vein as AEI and, and the Hoover Institute. Uh, they've sort of moved more towards a populist nationalist sen uh, sentiment. I mean, I think what you find when you talk to many MAGA supporters or that they do view the way Victor has sort of led his country as something that we need in the United States to sort of correct some of our errors, whether that's culturally, whether that's politically. I, as a conservative, obviously do not agree with that because I think there are far more better ways to disagree with individuals on the other side than having a strong man uh, in power. And so I would caution uh, the former president because you do run the risk, but she's already having trouble with those moderate Republicans, maybe even some conservative leaning Democrats who may say, I like certain uh, economic policies that conservatives may traditionally support. You're going to have a difficult time reaching out to some of those individuals.